I'm excited to talk to you, Christopher, because season three is already off and running. No pun intended to River, but um, <laughs> but I'm so excited. Where do we pick up with Roddy coming in here? Obviously, he's blonder, uh, still as salty or maybe even sassier uh, than usual. I don't know. I don't know if more than usual. I think maybe you just get a bit more of him this season, which is uh, really nice. Yes, he does come back with uh, some frosted tips, which uh, are to impress a lady friend, um, which is quite nice to play with that dynamic. You see him starting to kind of, you see his more playful side, I think, this season. Um yeah, and, and the pairings that he, he gets into this season are very different from what you saw previously when he was with Shirley and previously when he was a re with the rest of the Slow Horses. He has a really fun pairing this season. Well, I have to ask, do blondes have more fun? Of course they do, 100%. <laughs> Especially blonde Roddy Ho. He has the most fun out of all of them. <laughs> I was going to say, I think he uh, it might change... Who, it might have changed him. Uh, I, I asked if he was sassier than than he was uh, in previous seasons. I think it brings out maybe more of a confidence. If, if not that he lacked it in any form before, but this is him aggressively going after someone. I think it's what when I was uh, talking with Will about uh, what we wanted for this kind of bit of this kind of confidence that Roddy kind of gains through this season is more about him being a peacock, you know, and okay. and uh, really being as accentuated as possible. Um, so you'll notice, you know, he's got a very loud shirt and a very loud T-shirt and, you know, obviously the hair, um, but he makes it work because he's Roddy Ho, you know? Well, the best looking boy <laughs> should be with the best looking girl, right? Isn't that what he says? Uh, that's exactly what he says. <laughs> I noticed that you're obviously your accent is different than Roddy's was that something that they initially discussed with you about where he was from or maybe what kind of accent they'd like for him or is it something you thought maybe this this guy would have uh this kind of affectation because <laughs> I think yeah I think he has a bit of an affectation I mean obviously the whole series is set in London and he is an he is a Londoner I think as well like with Roddy he he probably puts on a bit more of a a geezery kind of London accent like because he thinks he's a bit of a rude boy but I you know with my own character kind of research and development I I think that is a bit more of a, a mask that he puts on but um not not a hundred percent but there is definitely something about his accent that is a bit affected <laughs> well getting back to uh, clearly the start of this season he's got He's caught some feelings, uh, or uh, as much as he's saying he's caught some feelings, <laughs> he's willing to say, um, will we learn his uh, <laughs> his true intentions? Or maybe he, he really does think that Eleanor's ready to move on and uh, he's waiting in the wings. I think that he's, uh, he's caught feelings for what's convenient right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's necessarily that he uh, has, you know, an, a dying love for Louisa, but she's right there. And, you know, as as he says, he hates to see good fruit rotting on the branch. So, you know, he goes for it. He sees it. He takes his opportunity. I'd say he's a bit of an opportunist in love. Uh, yes. Um, I have to say uh, the foot on the chair was a bit precarious. Um, and you could tell that... Uh, <laughs> he liked it <laughs> he did yeah I think I, th that scene was really fun to play with me and Roz um Roz who plays the Louisa guy she's uh she's a wonderful actress and you know I think with all of the scenes that we we get to do together all of us slow horses it's uh everything is up for play everything is up for grabs so there's nothing that you can't offer that won't be received with with like okay if you're gonna if you're gonna do that then I'm just gonna respond to you in the way that you know Louisa would it was really great fun though I think though the slap that you get was uh maybe <laughs> slap her around the world at that point because that was a hearty takedown and uh I was surprised maybe the next day there wasn't even a mark did you guys 
t talk about filming that particular scene and um, if you discussed whether or not, you know, it would leave a mark on Roddy or if we just uh, move on because he's maybe taken a punch in his day uh, based on that attitude. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it's very much that he's definitely taken a punch, you know, and, and also Amy, who plays uh, Shirley Dander, Shirley knows how to hit people without leaving a mark, you know, and to be effective because she's that good. Um, but yeah, you know, the amount of people that were absolutely thrilled that Roddy got a bit of a, a backhand was uh, was quite surprising, and quite hurtful, you know? No, it's not surprising. I don't think it's surprising, Christopher. You don't lie to me. <laughs> 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 I think uh, maybe that's probably one of the maybe the biggest scene maybe so far you might have gotten a response to <laughs> with the two yeah. episodes out um what kind of response have you have been receiving from the fans so far for season three here oh it's been an absolute uh it's been absolutely wonderful I mean from the kind of pre uh drop of reviews that came out before the season aired to the last few days since Wednesday when the first two episodes have come out, it's been, you know, the reviews have been absolutely astounding. Um, you know, one of the best things that I think that has been said, it's like it's worth getting an Apple membership for just to watch the show, you know, and I think it's really true. Apple are making some absolutely fantastic content. I'm really lucky to be in such a, a fantastic show that's really hitting its stride now. Um and it, that it's getting its recognition that it deserves. You know, we we all work so incredibly hard over the year to put uh, to make the the episodes, um, and it's a real testament to everyone's really hard work and graft. Because you know the conditions that we made the show under, whether it be COVID or you know working navigating you know the strike um, or the pending strike uh, to get as much as we could done before we had to shut down. You know, it's. Uh, it's been really a, a labor of love and the product that we've managed to deliver has been absolutely outstanding. Well, Roddy obviously feels like he's the smartest man in the room. I think we've discussed that in the past, um, but it's surprising his reaction when he does find out um, the license plate is real and that the individual who signed up for it, he says, you know, I'm vulnerable, which is a perfect retort to that. But also, I feel like he might have been a little bit um, personally, I, I feel like it, it past Roddy might have been a bit personally uh, offended. But this season, Roddy seems to take it in stride. It, obviously, we've, we've talked about his new personality this year. <laughs> I think he definitely, you know, it gives him a moment to show Louisa especially, you know, because it's just him and her in the office, it gives him a moment to show her that, you know, he's not all bravado and he's not, you know, doesn't know everything. And he thinks that that's what women want. They want to show, you know, he, he wants to show that he can be, you know, this I'm only human kind of guy. Uh, I think if it had been anyone else in the room with him, then he would have been quite affected by it because, you know, having having something as easy as that uh, go over his head, you know, it doesn't go down well. But he saw it as an opportunity to, you know, flirt with Louisa and he took it. I think uh, it's a great season so far. Obviously, Catherine has been taken. But I don't know, does Roddy care? Because, you know, he figures... Um, he's too busy obviously playing his games and clearly that's his focus especially when uh asked to check the hospitals for missing Catherine uh, and he's put on an air for Louisa but does he care about the people he works with yeah I think he, he definitely has varying relationships with each of them I think he does like the people that he works with in in his kind of own way I think in the term in uh in regards to Standish I think he he has a mutual understanding with her. I think he, she very much, I think she mothers him quite a bit and gives him a lot of leeway, um, as she does with a lot of the slow horses. She is, you know, the mother hen of Slough House. Um, and I think there's that mutual respect that all of the slow horses have for one another, that you're all in this situation and you look out for each other's backs, no matter, you know, what the, what the politics that are going on in Slough House are when there's an external factor affecting the group, then it's, you know, they band together in their misfit kind of way. 
you've mentioned some interesting pairings this season. And I'm curious, um, obviously, I'm sure you can't talk about who you've been paired with, but were you looking forward to working with someone more this season than maybe you had in the past? Uh, obviously, you, you all get to be a, in a few scenes in the first couple of, of episodes, but this may be maybe this season we're seeing you outside of the Slough House a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, you can see by some of the the uh, the press uh, photos that have been released already that, you know, I, I go off with Gary. Um, and I, I, having read the books uh, previously, uh, I knew that the, these pairings were kind of coming up. I mean, they change and they differ slightly, but not too much. Um, so I was really looking forward to having some one-on-one -on -one time with him. Um, obviously, it's Gary Oldman, so an absolute fountain of knowledge and and fountain of stories that come out of his mouth that you just can't believe that you're listening to on a day-to-day -day basis on set um but also just learning from him and, and seeing the way that he crafts lamb and the the amount of detail and work that goes into being so disgustingly grubby and greasy and and obnoxious and farty um you know it, it seems like on paper that that could be quite an easy trope to play, but it's not. It's actually very difficult to do it in a nuanced and believable way, the way that he does it. Um, so to watch him do that in close proximity was absolutely wonderful. And previously, you know, I got to work very closely with uh, Amy, who plays Shirley, and we just had, like, the best time. You know, that was her first season. Um, and, you know, being able to kind of, Indoct like bring her into the slow horses family um it was just such a joy you know when we got to do all the train stuff in season two um but yeah we we it's funny because every season that we've done you know there's a obviously a big event that happens and we all kind of come together before we split off and those scenes are the ones they're the most difficult because there's so many of us in the scenes um to get the coverage but also we're all having a, a ball of a time, you know, we're having so much fun uh, riffing off one another and everyone is, you know, oh, maybe we could do this or maybe, you know, you could take that line and this is how we can make it more pacey. So they're very exciting. It's very exciting to do and to, to get to work with them um, when we get to all come together is absolutely fantastic. Are there some scenes maybe you had a little bit of improv lay leeway with that uh, you're uh, fairly proud of? Maybe the chair scene might be a little improv as well. Yeah, so the, so the chair scene, um, the, the last line when Louise leaves the uh, the office and I go spicy, that was that was an ad-libbed line. And uh, I remember that line specifically because I had been talking to a friend of mine. She had been in a, a gym class recently and the instructor kept on yelling out, spicy, yeah, make it really spicy. And I'm like, oh, that's a perfect line that Roddy would throw as a, as a kind of like, oh yeah, you know? So, um, and I love like when things like that in, in my everyday life inform Roddy and then make it into the edit. And then everyone gets to see that. It's so satisfying as an actor because it actually means that you've inhabited the character well and, you know, the amount of checks that it goes through before it comes to, to screen. Um, it means that it's in line with it, with who Ho is. So it's uh, it's wonderful. I think the, the seasons just get better and better. And every episode I'm waiting to find um, more. I'm waiting for it to find more and more uh, heart racing moments. Is there a, maybe you can tease an episode people should definitely keep an eye out for? Oh, I mean, the, the thing about the se the thing about each of the seasons that we do is that the episodes build on one another so they don't you can't you the momentum that it builds to skip one episode and say go to episode six where all climaxes or to say that that's the standout episode but you need the lead up beforehand so it just it's the payoff at the end so i wouldn't i mean obviously right now the gotta next watch episode, it all. you gotta watch number three i mean there are some really outstanding moments in the uh season five uh, in episode five and six um that are just so exciting and I think there's something that 
we haven't done on slow horses before uh it's new it's, it will be new for the audience to see and it will it will elevate it to the next level well i'm eager 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 as you can tell <laughs> as a big fan <laughs> of the series um I, I think it's so special so much fun so much adrenaline every single episode you never know what's going to happen what has it meant to you to be a part of this series? It's obviously got a season two, three pickup, you know, right? <laughs> it's got a double F, a double season pickup just because how wonderful it is. And you touched on it before how people are telling you, you know, you need an Apple subscription because it's well worth it. Um, it, it how, what does that mean to you that this show is so well received and you're a part of that special magic? Yeah, I think it's like, you know, as an actor, you really you hope for for an opportunity to come along that will, you know, really turn things on its head for you or lift you into the next level of playing field. And uh, it always seems like a bit of a pipe dream, but then when something happens, it's not just something though, it's some, it has to be something very special. And uh, when I got the call um, to say that they had offered me the part of Roddy, it was just coming out of COVID um, it was the first project that I that I kind of auditioned for when COVID was starting to, the first lockdown was starting to, uh, oh gosh, you are Kika, the, <laughs> no, right? the first uh, lockdown was starting to finish and I, did, I didn't, no one really knows when you start on a new series what it can mean, but the fact that Gary was already attaching Kristen and Jack you kind of knew that the caliber of people that you were going to work with, you were going to make something pretty incredible. Um, and to come like now to season three, where the show I think is really hitting its stride. It's getting the accolades and the reviews that it really deserves and, and the visibility more importantly than anything um, to bring new viewers to Apple and to bring a new audience to Slow Horses it's incredibly exciting, you know, because it means that we're doing something right. It means that I get to continue doing the thing that I love and playing a, a cracking part. You know, when I left the first audition with James Hawes, the series one director, he said to me, he's like, it looks like you're having a lot of fun playing Roddy Ho. Just in the audition, I said, it would be an absolute dream to get to play him um, because every day would be fun and it has been, you know, it's, uh, it. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not, it's not, it's not a hard thing to do. Like, you know, the Will Smith, who's, uh, you know, our showrunner and writer, his writing is absolutely outstanding. Um, you know, he's very collaborative, nothing, he's not precious about anything. If, you know, he's very much that, you know, the character, if there's something that you'd like in, or if there's something that you don't think they would do, like, let's have a discussion about it very open to riffing on set. Um, but, you know, more often than not, the words that he's written on the page are enough because he knows it so well. You know, he's worked really hard with Mick Heron, who's the author of the books. Um, so he knows the world. Um, so it's an in incredible feeling to be a part of something so special that I hope will continue on long past this. Um, yeah, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. I was going to say, I hope that Mick has to write more books just so that you guys can keep this going. Well, I, I, th I think he's writing the ninth book at the moment. So who knows? We've got to get, <laughs> got to get everyone to watch it. So I, I have no doubt that this will be um, a, a character and a series that continues for some time because it's you see, as I said, the intensity, the adrenaline is there in every single scene. And you all seem to have such great on-screen chemistry. Everything is there that you would want for a series to just be like a chef's kiss of goodness. <laughs> ah, that's so nice. Thank you. What would you like to say to everyone who are fans and supporters of Slow Horses and the wonderful work each of you does in this series? Thank you so much for watching. Continue to watch. Tell your friends to watch it. Um, and, you know, it, I think the landscape of, of streaming shows at the moment, uh, you know, from Netflix to Amazon to any other streamer, 
it it can be very uh fickle you know and we're only as strong sometimes as our as our fan base and uh, having having the now gaining the momentum and growing that fan base it all goes by word of mouth so you know if you tell your friends just get that you know that month subscription that you can get for free and then hopefully like just binge the series that would be wonderful <laughs> well tis the season to gift people things so maybe That's you'll it. And uh only program it to watch slow horses. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs>